progressing for the install and how things are going? Yeah, offensively, uh, I feel like we're right where we need to be at camp. Um, obviously, there's always room to improve. Had a good practice, just got off the practice field right now. Um, the main thing that you want is, is guys learning and then retaining. And uh, I feel like we're doing that offensively at all positions um, and then staying healthy. That's, that's what camp's all about. And, um, you know, these guys already know us. We've been here, so they know what to expect. We've got a couple new coaches, but I feel like we're right where we need to be. Coach, how's the uh, backup quarterback job uh, going? Uh, it looks like Malik's been pretty steady there, um, but really it looks like maybe there's a little more competition for that third spot. Yeah, you're right there. You know, KJ's one, Malik is two right now. He's he's had all the two reps, and, you know, he hadn't let that go. Uh, Malik's a special athlete, and, you know, he puts pressure on KJ, and that's what we want. Um, you know, the third spot, we've got, you know, three guys that are really handling that with, with Jones, Renfro, and Coley. Um, all those guys are getting reps, um, and they're all different. You know, there's there's different abilities. That You know, the tough thing with fall camp is, you know, unlike the spring in the spring, you can throw a bunch of guys out there with a bunch of reps. You know, right now we're getting ready to beat Rice. So um, they're limited in, in, you know, the opportunities that they have on the field. So they got to make the most of them, um, which is, a lot of times is hard, you know, to be able to get in rhythm and be on the field and really get lathered up. So it's difficult. We understand that. But all three of those guys are still competing. It's a pretty rare thing to have as many starters back as you do, but then replace your quarterback. How does that uh, how does that help you going into the season, having so much experience back, particularly the line? Yeah, and now that's what I was going to say. You know, up front having that experience back, it's just huge. Uh, you know, we had a, had a no line change with Coach Kennedy, and uh, he was here in the spring and knows you know obviously our expectations and how he's going to coach those guys. So he's done a tremendous job with them, and I think they've really. Um, you know, like the change with, with Coach Kennedy. You know, the, I feel like that room's in a great spot right now. But we do. We've got a lot of returning guys. You know, obviously when you lose a guy like Felipe and, um, you know, you're going to feel that. And, you know, that's it was great that we had a spring without him and, and get those quarterbacks out there. And those guys are all, all chomping at the bit and they're all ready to contribute. Um, but I feel like we, we got a host of guys that are uh, very capable. And um, we just got to continue to, to work this, this fall camp. Coach, you, we know about Traylon Burks, obviously, but beyond him, how is the wide receiver wide receiver group coming along? Yeah, coming along strong. Feel really good about that group. Coach Guyton, you know, our receivers coach, has done a tremendous job with them. Um, I think the the biggest progress we've had in that room is just physicality and the blocking. Um, I, I love the way that he's put that as an emphasis. And um, you know, we've had some very physical practices, and, and a lot of times when you think physicality, you're thinking all those guys that are in the core. Um, it's been physical on the perimeter, and um, and those guys have done a, a tremendous job with that uh, because it's so important for our offense and what we do. Um, and then and then having the knowledge on the football field and with seeing the signals, playing fast, having to process things quickly, um, I feel really good about the receiver room. Obviously, Burks is is a leader in there, but um, you've got some other guys that have played some that are back. You know, with with Davion Warren, you know he looks healthy. You know, Trey Knox has has been out there competing with Tyson Morris and. Um, you know, you've got some a host of other young guys that uh, we think are going to be really good. Can you tell us a little bit more about Warren Thompson? I know you were you kind of re knew him there and were familiar, and he came here. Can you tell us a little bit more about Warren. Yeah, no, I ain't no kind of to it. You know, I spent an entire year with him. I know Warren Thompson well, and there's a reason why he's here. Um, Warren is an incredible athlete, um, a really good kid, soft spoken person, um, and and really willing to learn. Um, we're so happy to have him here. And, you know, he's had a nagging injury for most of fall camp. And um, he's now really starting to get healthy. And, and you see it. You know, he's very hard to color, cover. He's, uh, he's got great quickness. He's, he's a you know, big body guy. He's got great range. Um, he's got to get a little bit better blocking on the perimeter and just knowing exactly what to do. And things happen fast. You know, Coach Odom and their defense are flying around with a lot of different looks. So um, he's had to process that. But I, I like where he's at. And, and he's going to definitely provide some depth for us. Dow Long is obviously a guy who knows a lot about Arkansas, but, but this is the first time he's coaching college kids after being in the pros for so long. What, what are you seeing from Dow coaching those guys? Kind of how do you think he's made that transition from the NFL to coaching college kids? Yeah, Dow's a wonderful coach, great man. We're obviously really blessed to have him in, in our offensive room. Now, he was at Penn State last year, so he was in college. Now, he was not full time, so he wasn't able to coach on the field. But he, he got back in the college football game, so he kind of knew what to respect from. Um, knew what to expect from all all parts as far as recruiting and everything else. Um, 
uh, Dal's uh, very knowledgeable. He, he knows a lot of things about football, and it hasn't taken him long to, to learn our offense. Um, we try to pl pride ourselves on, on being simple, you know, so the players can, can see things and retain things easily. And obviously a guy like Dow who's been, been involved with football his entire life, he's, he's picked it up rather quickly. So tight ends are doing a really good job, and, and that room's in good shape right now. Yeah, the fact he was an NFL coordinator, does that add to, you know, um, can you glean things from him in that regard? Yeah, I mean, I think I think all of our coaches, you know, everybody comes from different backgrounds. You know, it doesn't matter if you're an eighth grade football coach, you're going to have ideas. And, you know, if, if I'm the coordinator and I'm, you know, not opening that up for other ideas, then, then I'm stuck in my rut. So we're always, you know, adapting and, and ready for change. And Dow obviously brings a wealth of knowledge and ideas that can help us. What was your assessment of KJ's spring and then what he's improved on since spring? And what's a good completion percentage number to, for him to shoot for? Yeah, you know, in spring um, – I thought KJ did a nice job overall. Um, you know, this summer, the biggest thing that we wanted to work on is um, continuing to work on his mobility and his accuracy in practice. You know, whenever KJ had some opportunities last year to play, and then when we had scrimmages in the spring, he was he was very accurate. Um, and when we were in, in practices, he wasn't as accurate. I think that uh, he's really worked on this this summer with, with Coach Walker and our strength program. Um, getting him stronger and, and physically more capable. But um, I really like where he's at from a practice standpoint with his accuracy. Um, you know, with, with our offense and what we do, I'd like for him to be over 65%. Um, and if, if we're doing that, then we're, we're hitting, hitting pretty good. You mentioned three wide receivers a minute ago after Burks. But I'm curious, after this next scrimmage, because you've rotated a lot of guys in there. Is mm -hmm. this the time to start paring things down a little bit more after this next scrimmage and, like, say, okay, these are our next wide receivers after Burks, I guess? Yeah, um, and we've been doing that the entire fall camp. I mean, honestly, every single day is a competition. You know, I know for a lot of times for media, it's the big deal with having this, this scrimmage and things are really going to shape out after that. We're doing that daily, and the players know that. Every single day is a competition. You're fighting for your job, just like I am. You know, So that's the expectation. you got to come ready to go and give your best every single day because somebody's trying to take your spot. Um, I think our competition in that room is, is very high. Like I said, there's a lot of guys that are trying to get on the field and eager to do that. Um, you know, The good thing is, is, is hopefully that will mean more guys can play because um, I think that – you know, if we can stay fresh at the tempo that we play at and have fresh guys on the field, I think it can help us offensively. And as long as those guys keep keep progressing in the offense, then you're going to see more players on the field. We haven't seen Traylon Smith out there, but Raheem Sanders been working a lot with the first mm -hmm. group. And then A.J. Green didn't get to scrimmage last time. How That's important right. is this scrimmage for him? Yeah, it's huge. He's back healthy. Um, today was A.J.'s fourth practice, you know, so being an 18-year-old true freshman and, and playing college football, things happen fast. Um, and he came back and was rusty yesterday in his practice. And, and today, you know, we were spotters, so we didn't have pads. So, yeah, tomorrow's going to be a big day. We'd like to see what he can do and how he can protect the football. You know, it's going to be huge for him getting hit by guys that, you know, aren't always real happy on the other side of the ball. So, um, we'll see how he plays. You know, I like, I like what he's done. Um, you know, Traylon will be out there tomorrow. I don't know if, you know, how much we're going to give him. We're going to back up on a couple of guys that, um, have, have had some things nagging on them. So uh, Rocket Rocket will see a lot of carries. Rocket's done a really nice job for us. Coach, when Sam was in here with us last Saturday, he mentioned some pass pro things. I'm wondering what your take is on what you saw last scrimmage and what you want to see better tomorrow. Yeah, we just got to be more firm. You know, I think the communication um, has gotten so much better from last week. You know, um, you know Coach Odom and, and what they're doing defensively, uh, they're throwing a lot of things at. Um, some of our young guys, and that's that's really what's, you know, what's what's gotten them. You've got some kids that have come in here, and you know they know football one on one, and you know they're trying to get their master's degree in ten days. So it's been really tough on some of those guys. It's been, you know, there's a lot of things flying around. They're having to react fast, and then at some point you actually have to block a guy. And uh, I think our D line, our linebackers have done a tremendous job, and our and our safeties. So. Um, it's it's great getting a lot of looks, and um, you know, Coach Kennedy, Coach Smith, our running back coach, and Coach Loggins, our tight ends coach. I think they've done a nice job of this week, really getting our guys in position to be, um, you know, able to protect our quarterback in the scrimmage. When KJ was with us last or the first time, I think he said he was two forty seven and wanted to be around two thirty five. What what's a good way? What have you seen from his mobility and stuff, and the optimal weight for him? 
Yeah, you know, and I've told him since last spring, I think 235 is the best weight for him. Um, he's he's now under 245. But I tell you what, he can run and he can move and he's got a first, you know, first step. So, you know, I'm not really concerned with it. You know, a lot of times there's there's wants and there's needs. We need him to be really, really good. I don't I don't care if he's 285 as long as he's dropping dimes on people and getting away from pressure. So, you know, uh, I like where he's at. He feels comfortable. Um, he knows that I would like him to be a little bit less, but but that gum, he's a big kid. He's going to be tough to bring down, and he's still very active with his feet. So um, that's kind of the way his body is. KJ's a big guy, and um, you know I'm I'm proud of where he's at right now. What has Keytron Jackson's camp been like, and is he making the strides that you hoped you'd see to this point? Keytron's been really really good. Um, if you look at the spring to right now, offensively, he's without a doubt the most improved football player on the offense. Um, you know, he had a drop today, had another phenomenal catch today. Keytron is, uh, you know, we knew from a recruiting standpoint, very, very talented kid, 25-foot, you know, long jumper as a junior in high school. He had a lot of pop, you know, obviously had a ton of offers. And um, he was nagged when he got here with an injury. He was an early enrollee kid, and now he's healthy. And uh, he's the Keytron we thought he was going to be. Um, so he's just got to continue to grow and, and progress, and um, you'll see him on Saturdays. Okay, well you, you mentioned the defense a minute ago. What you know, those safeties they talk about being pretty interchangeable back there. What have you seen from the safeties? And then you know, Catalan, he's obviously the, the the guy back there. Well, what do you see from the safeties in general? What do you think of, uh, going against Jalen Catalan? Uh, J Cat's one of the best safeties I've ever seen. You know, and, and I'm luckily I'm getting to see him on a daily basis. Um, the kid flies to the football, and you know, a lot of times you talk about quarterbacks and their accuracy. He is an accurate hitter. Uh, he does not miss, um, not very often at all. He wraps up. He diagnoses things very quickly. Um, obviously, he's watching the same offense every single day, which is, I guess, 13 practices and now 13 walkthroughs. So he, he's got a little bit of a key of what we're doing. But the sucker can play fast, and, um, and he hits you, and he hits you hard. Um, I love the way he plays. And, and those other guys have done a nice job, but he's, he's definitely the bell cow. Um, so we're going to see more of a running quarterback this year, but KJ can't get tackled during camp. So do you wean him into the playbook in terms of how much you run him against Rice? How, how does that work when you go, go from no hitting and then, bam, guys are taking you down? Yeah. Um, it's a transition. You know, it, it just is, and you can't recreate it, you know. So, you know, these kids have been playing football their whole lives, so they understand – what's different whenever you're getting hit. It's all about ball protection, you know. So, um, you know, I don't I don't want to say that we're just going to run him a bunch. You know, that's not what we want to do offensively. But sometimes in our play calls, things happen pre-snap, post-snap that are going to allow him to carry the football. Um, you know, I, I like the fact that you got a guy back there that if things do break down, they can create. And those are plays that, you know, God gave him the ability to do it, and he does it. So those are the things that I'm more excited about instead of just straight called runs. Um, obviously, situationally, then, you know, you will run him. Uh, but, yeah, I'm very excited to see him get out there. And, you know, a lot of times for kids that haven't been hit and are used to being hit, and they want to be hit, you know. Um, they want to have that first tackle. It kind of knocks the rust off of them. Okay, I'm ready to go. So um, I necessarily don't love that. But, you know, kids want to play, and, you know, they've been playing the game the whole life. So just got to keep them healthy. From what we see, Rocket <clears throat> might be the first ba backup running back after Traylon. Um how ready is he, and how much do you think y'all can lean on Rocket? Yeah, um, you know, Coach Smith has done a great job with him. Um, you know, he is – he's a 226-pound kid that can really run. You know, when he gets in the open field, he's a home run back. Uh, he can go all the way. Uh, very, very tough player. Uh, he runs in between the tackles. He's got a really quick step where he can, uh, he can get out of traffic as well. You know, arm tackles aren't necessarily going to bring him down. Um, and he's done a great job this week with his pass protection. You know, like I like talked about earlier, the communication wasn't exactly there. And, um, and that was a point of emphasis for us this week. And, and Rocket's done a nice job with that. Um, and he also, he's, he's got good hands to catch the ball out of the back, backfield. And, you know, we recruited him not knowing if he was going to be a receiver or a running back. So he's got receiver hands. Um, I'm really excited about, about him and the future that he's going to have here at Arkansas. I think Coach Pittman said after the scrimmage that Tykees Crawford had, had worked his way into the two deep. What, what kind of camp has he had and has he progressed kind of like how you had hoped? Yeah, Tykees, you know, he's been up and down, you know, and, and we kind of thought that he would be that way uh, from a physical ability standpoint. 
uh, he's got all the tools, you know, and, um, you know, we're excited about the future and, and what he can be. And, um, you know, Ty Keese is, he's going to keep working to be, you know, what he can be. He's, he's, you know, got the chances to be an NFL player and an all American top player in college. And, um, I think he'll get there as long as he puts his mind to it. Um, but I, I love the progression and, and how he's gotten better each and every day. Um, and today he took another step in the right direction. Yeah, I got a two-parter. Hey, first off, I, I know you're hunkered down here, but I was watching ESPN the other night. They showed uh, Felipe with like about a 60-yard run for the Falcons against uh, whoever they were playing. It was, you know, it was, a, it was an exhibition game. Did, did you have to see that? And just wonder what you thought about that. Yeah, we did see it. We actually had late-night meetings, and uh, and we knew Felipe. We had FaceTime him in the quarterback room earlier that week. You know, showed him everybody, and he was all excited and. We were all uh, all ready for it. We got done with all of our film, put it up, and we actually got to see that um, as quarterbacks. And then we were all, you know, talking about it. So we're extremely excited for him. We thought he played really well. I thought he got hampered with some penalties uh, that hurt him offensively. But um, I hear he's doing really good, and we've, we've been in contact with him. Really proud of him. Rodgers has moved over there to tight end. I was just wondering what, you, what I guess, precipitated that and how you think he's doing over there. Made a great catch today, you know. And, and you know, it was landing. Uh, really came to us, you know, and, and wanting to help the team and felt like his physical ability and stature, he felt like he could help the team with a little bit of a stacked QB room. Uh, so really excited about what he can do athletically for us. Yeah, he seems like he has the size. You know? Yeah, he's got a great frame. He's, he's a 6'4", 215-pound kid right now. He can put on another 15, 20 pounds. I think he can help us for sure. Thank you.